Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to Samuel Adams Returns, the Anti-Federalist. Yes, they did. They absolutely got it right here on Liberty Works Radio Network, where liberty works for you. And this is Tom Navolis, your host. And I'm so delighted that uh, you're joining me this week because we're really starting something extremely interesting. Uh, I'm actually doing a dual recording. So we're doing the normal voice recording, and what we use is that good software Audacity as our studio software. And here we are, we're in basically our makeshift uh, studios inside of the Center uh, uh, for Samuel Adams Center for uh, Political Science, also is the National Center for the Development of Constitutional Strategies, and Yes, it is. This is where Samuel Adams, yep, he sits here and he does a lot of stuff as he's returning to you. So we're taking and doing something different because what we're figuring out and finding out is that in reality, we need to have both the audio going on, yes, the radio. So that's where Liberty Works Radio Network and then what goes up on our archives on SamuelAdamsReturns.net. And uh, you can check out the archives there. But we're figuring out that, you know, to get a little bit more exposure, it'd probably be good if we took and uh, put things up on YouTube. And to take and just put up the audio portion on YouTube, you're finding that, you know, that that's kind of good and it's really nice. It gets out there. But <laughs> amazingly, people want to see what somebody looks like. And here you get it. This is this is what you get with uh, old uh, Tom Navolis on, uh, and uh, you know what? I'm not wearing my Samuel Adams tricorn and all of that, but we're going to take and we're going to bring through all of the different opportunities and the same content from the anti-federalist perspective. So it's really, really critical that we get this message out. And you know what? We had behind me for a while there our poster that we're using for uh, Samuel Adams Center for Political Science, SACPS.org, that we've been promoting on the radio program. Uh, and uh, that, <laughs> who would have thunk that when you're taking and you're looking into the screen on a Microsoft Surface using the video camera, that uh, perspective is interesting. So there is truly, the doors behind me are correct, okay, and the, and, and the position of the things on my right hand and on my left hand are correct. But when you put up a poster or the, you know, what we have, it's bass backwards. It's just amazing to see that. And, you know, I know that there's a lot of people out there that can read backwards, but anyway, you know, we're, we're not on topic just yet. But it's just kind of fun and exciting to kind of figure out that we're able to do the audio component of things and we're experimenting with the video. So we're going to try some stuff on this uh, Microsoft Surface and see how that works and where it's positioned and all of that. And if that doesn't make sense, I do have a, an HD camera that we may figure out how to put up in this tented uh, environment that we have for sound. Uh, which is also you know, sitting at uh, my desk of all places, yes. So we're, we're going to try and have some fun with this as well as try and figure out how to make the technology work and uh, you know what happens with the camera, how you keep the lights right. Maybe we need to add some light. I don't know yet, but that's pretty interesting. So for those of you who have never uh, experienced any of my radio programs or have looked at the Samuel Adams uh, different videos that are up there on the YouTube channel. It's Samuel Adams Returns is the YouTube channel as well. We're going to promote all of that both on Twitter and uh, on Facebook. We have a number of different Facebook pages and so on. But uh, the interesting thing is that Sometimes people were asking, and, and I have to tell you, a number of years, over the years, the, the media has said, you know, this Tom Novolis, he's a self-styled constitutionalist. Interesting. Self-styled constitutionalist. What does that mean? 
Well, you know, I expressed that in a program uh, a couple of weeks back where self-styled constitutionalist is no different than what uh, General Gates was calling the majority of the citizens in the colonies of the day is that they, they knew the law. They knew the suit. They knew the English Constitution better than those that were sitting in the legislature. Okay. So, Tom, how, how is it that you get all of this? Well, as I've mentioned to other folks and other times when I speak and all of that, is that I've probably got a few thousand digital books that are our founders' books. I have all the writings of Samuel Adams in digital format. I have all, and these are, you know, his writings, his original writings, okay? They're in, you know, four different volumes, as well as the volumes that his nephew wrote about him and some of the others, everything written prior to 1850, uh, that brought that together. So I have a lot of that. And then, you know, I go into the Patrick Henry's. I go into all of the anti-federalists. Uh, today, I'm going to tell you about an anti-federalist that I learned something extra about. And uh, I really didn't know where this guy got his name from and his background. And some of the things that you're going to be seeing me looking up and down. So if you see my eyes go up, that's because I'm looking at the computer screen to uh, take and you know watch my timing, uh, to take and look at the resources that I have uh, up on the big screen because uh, you know eventually I will put on the glasses and get a little studio or studious for you, and you know so we're going to keep going back and forth, but couple references. So some people say, okay, Tom, where'd you get this whole thing on, you know, founder's background on the Constitution and all of that? Well, as I mentioned to you before, it's a simple little resource. Oh, little resource. Uh, let's see. It's about yay thick, uh, averaging. Oh, what is it average here? This one here averages about 700 pages. Okay, let me creep it up as it goes backwards to you. I This is really amazing. I don't understand why it's backwards when something's written. Uh, I'm not smart enough on the video stuff, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. It is called the Founders Constitution. I talk about it. You can you know, go online. It's online at the University of Chicago. I will put in, again, the reference for this. Five volumes, ladies and gentlemen, of this. And, yeah, it has really big print, too. So... You know, the, the intensity of this is that these are the words, the letters, the backgrounds of the Founding Fathers and the likes of John Locke and, and some of the others that were contributors, primary contributors. I study this stuff. Oh, you can see my pen is marked in there. Yeah, and, oh, there's a little underlining, you know, those types of things. I know I'm being silly, but... When someone starts saying, hey, you're nothing but a self-styled constitutionalist, ladies and gentlemen, I think that I probably have studied the Constitution and the founding of America more than, what, 90% of the politicians? And that's at state, local, and federal government. Now, the one that I haven't studied sufficiently yet is because I've been moved to Ohio is the Ohio State Constitution. So, you know, I'm a little little behind on getting into that one. I, when I lived in Washington State, I knew the Washington State Constitution laid the back of my hand. So, hmm, is that something that a citizen should do? I think so. I mean, that's what our founders called us for. Two is not to take and just trust somebody else. And we're going to talk about that today, especially as we look into more of the Anti-Federalists. Now, the Anti-Federalists, this is a simple one here. This one you can pick up cheap. I think I picked it up, what's it say, for eight bucks. Uh, this is an abridged version. Remember, I tell you that the University of Chicago also has some of the greatest volumes of all the Anti-Federalist papers. Volumes compared to the Federalist papers, okay? So uh, anti-federalist, and in here it also has the Constitutional Convention debates uh, and some other stuff. And this little one, you know what I mean? But the print's really small. You need like, you know, you know one by 50s or something like that maybe for reading. But, you know, I'm hoping that the young folks out there will really uh, look at it from this perspective. So we're going to get into the tail end 
uh, of this this week as we're coming to within the you know four minutes of this segment. The whole idea is that what happened, the anti federalists you know, okay, so what you have is you have this Constitution thing come out of the convention, and it goes to the states. Well, first off, it went to Congress that said, okay, uh, we'll let it go out. And remember, this was the Congress under the Articles of Confederation. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll take this document, and we'll go ahead and we'll shove it out there to the states. And the states debates, you know, we can go through different ones on the Massachusetts. And it's really interesting to read everything that was going on in the states as well, if you really want to get an understanding of how the Constitution should function and exactly what the founders were intending for what? Oh, what they were intending for what came out as the amendments, the Bill of Rights, all of that. Okay, so what we now have and what we are looking at is a gentleman, and we're going to talk about, is that New York. New York was really interesting because two of their delegates pulled out of the convention because they were figuring that what's coming out of this convention was what? A consolidated government. Huh? You mean we have a consolidated government? It, it wasn't supposed to be like that? That's what we pretty much have today. The states are kind of, you know, sidelined if you look at what's going on and suing. You know, anyway, let's take that for what it is, and we're going to get into this fellow. So the debates were happening, and that's what was going on. And uh, during the debates in New York, uh, we see that, yeah, you know, Virginia and that kind of gave in and they went ahead and boom, you had over your nine that was required for what the Constitution to go in effect. Well, New York didn't stop. They wanted to get their point in. They wanted to make a point. They wanted to make sure that we would drive to what would need to happen to protect the liberties of of we the people, of those that would now be uh, drawn into and, and become a part of this national government and to try and manage and watch how the functionality of the national government should operate. So I talked about it a couple of weeks ago is this difference between the Constitution as a framework, okay, as a framework for governance. But what's more important is constitutionalism. And you know what? They talk about it and they write about it in, yes, what I just showed you. So constitutionalism is that putting into action, that effect, that meaning, that, uh, that means of how a framework is going to take and work within a society. Very interesting. So this was... Uh, Totally different. And the debates in New York, just they just kept hammering away. And what we're going to do is we're going to get into what these debates were with a very interesting anti-federalist. I mean, next to Mercy Otis Warren and a few others, they, this guy was really profound. And his name is Melanchthon Smith. Figure that one out. Where's this guy get this name, Melanchthon Smith? Well, you know, it was interesting when I started doing some research on him, again, he was one of these guys I've read, but it was like, you know, who is this guy? Well, it turns out this guy was named after none other than one of the primary reformers, Philip Melanchthon. He was one of the leaders in the Reformation, and uh, that just blew me away. I mean, just going then doing some research on Philip Melanchthon, and he was like this super dude right next to Luther, which was extremely impressive. I mean, Luther was like the front guy. This guy was the brains behind the movement, especially in the determination of Lutheranism. Not like anything you see today in a lot of the churches that have gone on the liberal side. But what it was is this guy was a primary theologian of the time for the Lutherans during that Reformation you know, coming out. Oh, can I say that and use that in the right format? Well, they did. But we're going to get into more of that as we come back. Where? Here. At Samuel Adams returning and the Anti-Federalist 
absolutely getting it right here on Liberty Works Radio, where liberty works for you. Come on back for the next segment. We're looking forward to it.